Before talking about flows in Curator, let's review briefly a few things about logs. The logs are where you get information like uh, source and destination IPs, uh, sometimes you get port information, and any other fields that your DSM, or in other lingo parser, extract from the particular application. And they are actually very important, and we use them in security a lot. But the problem with logs is that a bad guy or somebody who writes some malware is not going to be producing logs that are output and tell you I'm screwing you up, step 25 or 35. So they're, they're going to try to disguise themselves. Uh, so getting the logs is just a small part of the picture. There are many things that you will be missing if you are only uh, collecting logs. So enter the next step, which are network flows. And where does the network flows come? Well, it's all the information that exists in the TCP IP header. So every message that goes into the internet has some headers. And from there, uh, Curator can extract uh, information. And how does Curator get that info? Where does it get it from? Well, routers. And if it's a Cisco router, they're going to be called NetFlows. If it's a Juniper, it will be JFlows. There's a standard called SFlows. But, you know, the, it, these are the same thing. But also, IPSs and other networking devices can be sent that information in a format called IPFix. What's in it that is useful? So the type of protocol being used, what application is actually communicating, the quality of service, and many other uh, aspects. So let's see those in, in Curator. For example, in here, in the log activity, we are seeing, you know, uh, lo logs are actually coming and we see, as we said before, uh, destination RP, source IP, the, the, the port when, when available, all the fields like uh, username, etc. Stuff that is written by applications and programs that wants to tell you about things that are actually happening. The flows, the network flows, you get them into uh, this particular tab. And this is the type of view that you'll get in a healthy system when you go into the offenses uh, with, with lots of information that you get, you know, combination of events or also uh, logs events or f uh, and or flows. And you see there are many offenses and the richness of one of the richness of Curator is precisely the capability of combine uh, logs and uh, flows together. So let's take a look at this particular offense that has some uh, logs and some uh, flows. And uh, when you click on it, you can actually click in here and see all those logs and also all those uh, flows. And uh, by clicking here on the flows, we you see the type of information I was referring to that you can actually see, uh, you know, like uh, the type of application being actually used, uh, quality of service, and you know other fields that are extremely important to detect uh, bad behavior. So, for example, in this particular, uh, uh, in the particular case of this offense, we can actually see that uh, there's been poor scanning. And how do you detect poor scanning? Well, if I use ICMP, the protocol, on multiple ports, on a, on, you know, on a rapid succession of you know, switching between uh, one port to another, that's scanning. And you can detect those type of things uh, with, with flows. And many other sophisticated uh, rules that Curator has uh, have a lot to do with flows. So again, Network flows are great and really expand the kind of things that Curator can detect with all those rules that fire on uh, uh, network flows and discover things that uh, you didn't even know that you were that were happening and, and you were not looking for them because you didn't even know what to look for. Curator with those default rules that it has on logs and flows can detect many of those uh, particular events. But there is more and it's what is called just flows. And that has to do not with the TCP IP headers, the information that's in there, but actually inspecting the content of the payload. After the header comes the payload, and, and you know, I need to see what's in there. First of all, how do you get those flows into Curator? Well, uh, there's uh, some networking equipment like Gigamon, 
uh, or tabs or mirror port that actually take a copy of all the traffic that is going and fits into one of the curator's uh, flow processors. And what can you do with that uh, data? So traditionally there was something that has been called QFlow as in curator flow which really allows you to inspect the content of the first 64 bytes of the actual payload and you can let's say that you are looking for social security numbers or uh, some particular information in the payload you can do that with the QFlow. Let me show you an example. So we have this offense in here. Let's actually uh, click on it to to see as I like to do why this rule actually fired and there is a custom rule that we that we created for this example in which we say well if the network if the uh, information comes from the wireless network and port 53 which is the DNS and the payload contains the word Cydia so this is what we are searching for then uh, this offense fires and what this will tell me is that somebody is actually uh, using a jailbroken phone because Cydia is the name of the ROG app store and in fact if we go into any one of these flows we should see in the actual payload that we get the word Cydia and here we see it uh, right there and that's again inspecting the content of the payload and that's what QFlows uh, allows you to do. And the next step on it is well I don't just want the first 64 bytes of the payload I want the whole thing well, our full packet capture component of QRadar is called QRadar Incident Forensic and what it does is that it allows you to take the whole traffic and being able to replay it back for you and tell you everything that is going. Uh, let me show you an example of that. So in the Forensic tab of, uh, of QRadar here we have some uh, packet captures that has been taken in here and notice the type of things that you can actually look in here for hashes, support, basically everything that is, that is going through we can actually inspect it. For example in this particular case uh, you'll see that the, that the user actually displayed a web page and you see the, the this thing in uh, yellow indicates that the user actually click on this particular link as one of the many things that it is. So you can replay everything that he did. Uh, all the traffic that went there is here for you to replay and you don't need to see it in tool like Wireshark. I mean it is really is seen in the in the same way that the actual end user uh, uh, use it. If it's a, a, a command line you will see you know let's say that he did some telnet uh, commands you'll see them as, as they're playing. So uh, very easy uh, to see everything that is happening. The only objection that you may have around forensic is that it's post-mortem. You know, you don't do forensic uh, real time. I mean when you have an offense fire you can go from the offense into forensic and inspect everything that happened before and after the actual offense. But it's again, you know, after the fact. What if I want to actually detect some specific things in the payload as they are actually uh, coming through? So enter Curator Network Insight and what Network Insight is going to do is take the payload, inspect the payload dynamically as it's coming in in real time and do mainly two things. So here in the you, you get to see the output of Q&I extracting, inspecting the whole payload, extracting those fields and sending those that network flows into uh, the uh, curator and these are some examples of the fields that you can actually see for example the, the actual uh, HTTP host that was contacted, uh, the content type, the file hash and, and, and more about that later but this is actually not something that you get from the TCP IP headers this is something that you need to compute real time and Network Insights does that with all of the objects that it sees come through. What, what user agent was the, uh, the individual user? Well, we know that he was using Safari in this particular case. What's the file name? 
always a PHP, but it could be a PDF, whatever, and you get uh, the hash uh, computer of it. And, you know, key fields like uh, the, the requested URL, uh, you get uh, DNS information. In this particular case, there wasn't any. That's what you see, they're not available. But all these 40 plus fields are actually uh, extracted, like, a queue, like if you were to do a, a manual queue flow for every one of these fields well you don't have to now with q and i q and i actually extract those automatically for you and you can have offenses and searches and all the nice things that you do in curator uh, uh, coming from that information so again extracting 40 fields and computing some key attributes and let me give you an example of the th cool things that you can do with this this is an offense that fire, as his name is indicating, when a file hash associated with a threat coming from fishme.com uh, actually happened. And, and this is the explained in more detail in a separate video. But again, this is a combination of uh, events and flows. And what basically uh, this, this rule, we, we can actually click on the rule that, that we uh, created uh, for this one. And there were actually two that fire. This is a standard in the RFI ISI. And this is the one that we wrote, in which one of the custom properties that we get with Q and I, which is the file hash, is in one of the thread feeds that we get from the Fish Me app uh, that feeds Curator, and that's actually very important because when you want to detect uh, things like phishing using URLs and, and IPs. It's not a good thing because if a guy is attacking your company, he's going to use a fresh URL and a fresh IP that has never been used. So there will not be reputation that you can use to detect that. But the artifacts, because these people buy those attack tools from somebody else, he's not capable to even recreate those artifacts. So you can get the, you can catch those uh, by looking at the hash. And again, this. Uh, uh, the, in this particular case, looking in the payload, calculating the file hash of all the items, you can get this simple rule that actually fires when we see the hash of a malicious artifacts involved in my traffic. So I hope that this has given you uh, an overview of the not only logs, but also the type of uh, flows that you can actually uh, get uh, with, with Curator and that beautiful combination of treating events and flows of the different type combined to detect uh, things that you were not looking for. This is not something that you can find with a search because you don't know what you are actually searching. You want some sophisticated rules that inspect all this content and fire and detect things uh, so you can actually take actions on them.